I welcome you back to the presentation on analysis of uh, determinate structures. The learning outcomes of uh, today's lecture would be concepts of uh, influence lines and obviously moving loads, influence line diagrams for reactions, bending moment and shear force in beams and application of influence line diagrams in simple numerical problems. Now most of these structures like bridges are usually subjected to moving loads. If you imagine bridges are built to make the vehicles move from one end to the other end okay, of the river or it could be any natural obstruction. A picture shows here a vehicle having some trailers okay, moving on the bridge. So the concept of influence line diagrams are generally helpful in analyzing bridges or beams subjected to moving loads. Now the wheel loads of vehicles are generally treated as concentrated loads. As you can clearly see the contact point of the tire or the wheel of a vehicle is very small so one can assume that okay the load okay acting from this axle is transferred onto the beam or floor of the bridge as a concentrated load similarly the axle loads okay of this and this wheels are again assumed to be acting as concentrated loads okay on the floor of the bridge or onto the beams respectively. It is important to understand that when the vehicle moves the distance between the wheels will always be constant and hence okay the loads which we are trying to assume as concentrated loads okay move at fixed distance okay when the vehicle moves on the bridge. One more type of vehicles that we can think of here are tracked vehicles. So we just try to look at this. Okay, this is a battle tank and the wheels okay are aligned in such a way that okay and it is being uh, wrapped okay by a chain okay which we can call as a tracked vehicle. So in such situations we can assume that the load is distributed okay over this entire length of the track of this vehicle. We can have different types of track vehicle also. So you need to understand that when we talk about analysis of uh, bridges so we use standard IRC loadings where we have wheeled vehicles as well as tracked vehicles. Now whenever the loads move on the girder the support reactions will change with respect to the position of loads on the beam. If you recollect the examples that you have been doing in beams in the last semester we had given you a beam we had subjected to some kind of load which is stationary and we had asked you to calculate the reactions so in that problem okay the load is stationary and hence the reaction that we get for that numerical problem okay at the left support as well as the right support in case of a simply support beam is constant but 
the problem that we are trying to talk about is with respect to moving loads. So when the load moves on the beam, it will be occupying different positions at different intervals of time and with respect to each position you can expect okay there would be some value of reactions at both supports and as the position of the load shifts the reactions at the two supports also will change so we just try to look at this beam so we have got a simply supported beam AB let us assume that okay a rolling load a single concentrated V load of intensity W okay tries to move or cross the bridge or cross this girder from left to right my point of interest is to know what is the reaction that support A will develop during this process right now the wheel load is well outside the beam or the girder now at some instant okay the wheel load okay is at is acting at A that is it just enters the bridge so we are trying to find what is the reaction okay at support A strictly speaking as you can understand okay the reaction VA will be directly equal to W so no part of W okay will go to B because the load is right on support A now for some time you can expect the wheel load to move and occupy some position as shown here with respect to this okay we will have some support reaction obviously I get I think you can guess that the value of VA will reduce from W it had assumed okay in the previous position now the wheel load will continue to move further when the load continues to move further again we will have some more some other value of reaction which will be less than the previous case and finally it reaches support B when it reaches support B the value of reaction at A will be 0 okay and further on it has moved beyond the beam so the vertical reaction will again take a value 0 so our point of interest is to find the value of reactions at support A when the load enters the beam at A and leaves the beam at B so as you can clearly understand the value of a reaction at A keeps on changing okay as the load moves or occupies different positions now we just try to extend the discussion to the right support so right now we are talking about what is the reaction that we will get at support B when a rolling load single rolling wheel load of intensity W crosses the beam AB from left to right right now it is well outside support A at some instant it is right on support A as you can easily guess the support reaction at B at this instant is 0 now the load continues to move towards B and the reaction at B starts to increase now it has moved further towards B so the reaction at B has further increased now finally it is right at B so the value of VB is equal to W at this stage now once the load exits the beam VB becomes 0 so what you have observed okay from these two cases are okay whenever a rolling load moves on the beam okay the reactions at the two supports of a simply supported beam keeps on changing okay and you can understand that they reach 
the maximum values at some instants and take zero values okay at some other instant now not only the reactions that we are trying to talk about here okay so whenever the loads move on the girder the internal forces which are the bending moment and the shear force at a given section will also change with respect to the position of the loads on the beam obviously at any section the internal forces do depend on the support reactions we have seen in the previous discussion the support reactions keeps on changing and hence the bending moment at a section should also keep on changing okay as the loads move on the bridge now let us again take a case where we have a simply supported beam okay subjected to concentrated load or a single concentrated wheel load which crosses the beam from left to right now my point of interest is that see some intermediate section where i am trying to calculate the two internal forces that is the bending moment and shear force now right now the load is well beyond support a it is not on the beam so obviously there is no load on the beam the bending moment and shear force are zero at c at this instant now the the moment okay the load starts to move at some instant okay it is acting at a and when it is acting at a okay the entire load is taken by reaction at a as we have discussed earlier so the value vb is zero as you can easily easily understand here again at this instant you don't have any bending moment okay at section c or shear force at section c now once this load starts to move okay so let us assume that at some instant okay it is right at position c and for this position we can expect some value of bending moment at c the load keeps on moving so at some other instant okay it is situated at some distance to the right of c with respect to this position of load the bending moment at c will obviously be different as you can guess it will be less than the bending moment it experiences when the load is right at c the value of shear force also keeps on changing at c when the load w takes different positions eventually the load reaches support b at which in which case during this case the bending moment and shear force will be zero now once it goes beyond that yeah obviously there will be no internal forces in the beam so one need to understand that when the loads move on a beam they are not stationary the reactions keep on changing at the supports both left and right in simply supported beam at a given section the internal forces keep on changing that is bending moments and shear force keep on changing at the section that we are trying to consider okay for various positions of loads on the beam hence with the, with this discussion we can try to frame the objectives of the study there are many objectives to begin with we would like to determine the load position that is at what position we have to keep the load such that we get maximum reaction at the left support in the beam for a given system of moving loads and to compute its values so you need to understand there are two things that we have stated one is to get maximum reaction at a for a given system of loads 
how should you place the load and having placed the load in an appropriate position okay what is the value okay of the maximum reaction okay at the left support we can do the same thing for the right support okay to get maximum reaction at the right support for a given system of moving loads how do i position it once i position then how do i get the numerical value of the maximum reaction at the right support again the next objective would be given some section okay for example we have a simple support beam of say 6 meter span okay let's assume some system of loads will cross the beam some weight wheeled vehicle will cross on the beam i am more specific about a section let me take a section which is at 2 meters from left support i'm not talking about mid span i'm just taking some arbitrary section right so given the section and the system of loads how should i place the given system of loads on the beam to get maximum bending moment at section c and what will be its value similarly we are talking about the maximum shear force that will develop at a given section okay when a given system of loads move on the beam so that means first thing is we have to first understand how to position the loads to get a maximum shear force at a given section for the given system of loads having placed it appropriately we try to calculate the intensity okay of the maximum shear force the next important objective would be to calculate the absolute maximum values when we say absolute maximum it is nothing but the maximum of bending moments okay that we get at different cross sections for example in my previous uh, discussion i told you that i am taking considering 2 meters from left support i can take 2.1 i can take 2.2 meters i can take 2.3 meters so i can take many number of sections okay along the length of the beam and i can calculate what is the maximum bending moment that each and every of every section that i just consider right over the length of the beam will develop now i am talking about the maximum of all those maximums which i am going to define as absolute maximum bending moment or absolute maximum shear force okay so we are trying to talk about okay for a given system of loads how do i place it on the beam such that i get the absolute maximum bending moment in a, in a given section okay at what section it occurs and how do i calculate the value so there are two three things that we are trying to talk about one is okay what section it occurs how do i place it and how do i get the numerical value of that the same thing is applicable even for shear force that means for a given system of loading where exactly we get absolute maximum shear force and how should i place the loads to get that and how do i compute the value so this is what we are trying to basically do okay in this particular exercise now when we are trying to do attempt uh, to solve numerical problems under this category okay we would be trying to consider problems of different types for example we are trying to take a simply supported beam of some span we will be subjecting it to single concentrated wheel load moving udl longer than the span that means for example we just look at the tracked vehicle that we were trying to consider or uh, uh, discuss earlier assume that the length of that uh, tracked vehicle okay something like about 4 uh, meters and it's trying to cross a bridge okay of length 3 meters having a span of 3 meters the bridge span is 3 meters the tracked vehicle okay length is something like 4 meters or more than 3 meters so we are talking about a case like that moving udl longer than the span then moving udl 
shorter than the span. Then we have two concentrated wheel loads at fixed distance. You can, in simple terms, uh, consider this to be a, uh, a car or a two-wheeler. Okay, what uh, in car you got two axles. In case of two wheelers, you got two wheels. They are positioned at fixed distance, and then it's moving. So the wheel loads, two wheel loads. We are trying to assume them as concentrated loads and they are spaced at some fixed distance and it moves on the beam. Now coming to the last case, we are talking about multiple concentrated wheel loads at fixed distance. So you got many wheel loads like for example multi-axle truck. Okay, so the position of the wheels are fixed or spacing is fixed. Okay, so the, each axle will have some load and it's going to move. So these are the different types of problems we are trying to consider and each, in each of these problems we are trying to uh, uh, determine the objectives stated okay just earlier to this. Now please understand we don't use okay the routine uh, calculations that we normally do conventional calculations in case of moving loads. For example if you just try to quickly recollect we have a simply support beam, it carries some system of loads and if I want to calculate the reactions okay, in the simply supported beam, I normally use the two equilibrium equations or three equilibrium equations that is uh, algebraic summation of moments due to all forces okay, acting at the left support with some sign convention equal to zero which will give me the vertical reaction at the right support and if I apply the algebraic summation of all vertical forces acting on the beam equal to zero with some sign convention so I get the vertical reaction at the other support that is VA and if I apply algebraic summation of all horizontal forces acting on the beam I will get the horizontal reaction HA so further I can make use of these reactions to calculate the internal force in the beam at any point that is the bending moments and shear force Please understand it will be very cumbersome and maybe not possible okay to solve problems okay under moving loads especially when the loads become very complicated so we normally use what are called as influence line diagrams okay which can be made use of okay to find okay the quantities that were stated in the objectives let us understand what is an influence line diagram. An influence line diagram that is ILD is a curve whose ordinates represent to scale the variation of some function. Here's function could be reaction, it could be bending moment, it could be shear force etc. At a given section, this is very important when unit load moves along the beam. So just try to check here, this is a diagram very similar to the BMD or SFD that you normally have drawn for beams. You have one more diagram which we are going to call it as influence line diagram. Right? It is made of curves, curved lines or straight lines, whatever it is. Okay, the ordinates in this ILD, okay, represent to some scale the value of say bending moment at a given section when the unit load moves along the beam so that means all the ordinates that we are trying to write here are connected to one single section unlike BMD where you are trying to get the values of bending moments over various sections simultaneously you are trying to see what is the bending moment that we have at different sections okay at once you are trying to see whereas here ILD you are trying to get the variation of a particular quantity it is bending moment or reaction or shear force at a given section when the load keeps on moving so the entire diagram is applicable to one particular section for statically determinate structures like simply supported beam or a cantilever beam the influence line like the ILD influence line diagram for reactions bending moments shear force etc will be composed of straight lines whereas if you want to plot ILD for indeterminate structures 
okay it will be made of non linear lines curvy linear lines so the ild that we are talking about is for determinate structures so basically it will be comprising of straight lines now let me introduce you to the influence line diagrams different types of influence line diagrams okay that we would be using when we try to analyze okay a simply support beam okay subjected to different types of moving loads now what we are attempting is to discuss ild for reaction at left support in a simply supported beam so in the picture you are trying to see a simply supported beam if the span is l l is the span of the beam you got left support a right support b and look at this we have got a unit wheel load okay it's not a w like we talked about in the previous case we are talking about unit wheel load the intensity of this load is 1 kN you can assume it as 1 kN okay why do we draw ild for uh, in unit loads we are not trying to draw influence line diagram for some value of load we always try to say a unit load moves on the beam okay when the unit load moves on the beam how does bending moment vary at a given section how does shear force vary at a section how does the reaction va vary how does the reaction vb vary when a unit load moves from a to b because okay once you know the value of reaction or bending moment at a given section for some position of unit load okay if you want to calculate okay the value of bending moment at the same section for a load of some magnitude w we just magnify this value by w so it's very simple we always try to draw influence line diagrams for unit loads okay so this is the beam that we are trying to talk about now we'll just try to check this is how the influence line diagram looks like if you recollect we had done this discussion okay so if the when the load unit load moves and occupies position at a we told you that the reaction va will be equal to 1 unit value the same the entire load okay it is transferred at support a so the value of va will be equal to 1 correct and as the load keeps on moving to the right the value of va keeps on reducing when the value of va assumes position at b okay the value of va is zero so we are trying to see that please understand you can easily draw a um, constructed table and then you can easily plot this particular line without any difficulty so what we have done is we have just put a baseline to match along the length of the beam and we are trying to write ordinates here okay which represent the reaction at a for corresponding positions of wheel loads starting from a to b so this is a typical ild that we are trying to get how do we write it's a triangle it's a right angle triangle okay it has an ordinate 1 okay under the uh, reaction a okay now let us try to see how we are trying to use this particular diagram it's quite simple now when the load moves and occupies some position c at some instant we would like to know what is the reaction okay at support a so first you need to plot the ild below the beam so i hope you know how to plot the ild it's very simple it's a right angle triangle you are talking about ild for va so the ordinate at a would be 1 the ordinate at b is 0 you join by a straight line okay the next important thing i have to do is okay with respect to position c i have to just calculate an ordinate in ild right under the load so let us assume that z is the coordinate or ordinate okay in ild under the position of load that is unit load at c once i get this particular value that is z okay i can easily try to use this influence line diagram okay to find the numerical value of 
reaction at A. So we just try to check the reaction at A is calculated as the unit load multiplied by the ordinate in ILD under unit load. So unit load means it is 1 kN. Ordinate in ILD under the load is Z. So all you are supposed to do is multiply 1 into Z and that will give you the reaction at A that is VA when the load is at C. I hope it's right trying to understand like right? it's very simple okay so the Z here the ordinate okay depends on where you are trying to place the load so as the load shifts on the beam Z is changing right so Z keeps on increasing as you move back and you're right at point A when you write at point A okay intensity is always 1 and the ordinate is 1, 1 into 1, 1 kilonewton. The reaction at A is 1 kilonewton when the unit load is at A. However, when the unit load is at, is at B here, what is the reaction at A? So that means I have to move okay, the unit load to point B. So the ordinate here is 0. Okay, Z vanish is 0. So how do I make you the diagram? 1 into 0 is 0. And what does it give you? It gives you the reaction at A. So please understand this ILD is exclusively for you to calculate the reaction at A. Right? You have to choose the ordinate in the ILD corresponding to the position of the load, unit load of the beam. Okay? And whatever it is, okay, you are always trying to get the reaction at A. This is how you try to talk about ILD, okay, for reaction at A. At A. Right? Now, instead of 1 kilonewton, what if, if I have a, a UV load of W kilonewton? Like for example, it's not 1 kilonewton, I've got 60 kilonewtons. No problem. Okay? So you will be trying to, okay, draw the uh, beam, place the load W at the appropriate position, okay, where we are trying to uh, uh, calculate the reaction for that location, draw the ILD for VA, so it's a right angle triangle, since you are talking about VA, the ordinate should be 1 at that point. Then we try to calculate the ordinate in the ILD, okay, right below the load, that would be Z. Now we try to do a simple calculation. So reaction at A, that is VA, is nothing but load into ordinate in ILD under unit load. It's not unit load, it is under W load. Okay, so it is W into Z, that would be WZ KN, KN, okay, that's the reaction, right? So all you have to understand is load multiplied by ordinate under the load, okay, that will give you the appropriate value of the reaction. Okay, the same thing that we can talk about, okay, ILD for reaction at right support in a simply supported beam. So, how do you write the ILD? It is nothing but the mirror image. Okay, here since we are talking about ILD for VB, okay, the right angle triangle is so drawn that the unit ordinate is right at B. Okay, the ordinate at A is 0. That's how you get the right angle triangle. Okay, now I'm trying to make use of this. Okay, to find the reaction at B when unit load is some is at some position. C or the beam. Now let me just try to assume that the unit load is at C. Okay, some position okay of the load is what we are trying to talk about here. And the next thing that we have to do is we have to calculate the corresponding ordinate in ILD okay right under the load. So that is Z. Okay, as you can understand. As you keep moving, the wheel load on the beam, Z keeps on changing. As the wheel load starts to move towards left, Z decreases. That is, the reaction at B reduces. And when the wheel load starts to move towards B, the reaction at B starts to increase. Okay, now how to calculate the reaction at B when the unit load is at C? So it's nothing but intensity of the load unit load 
multiplied by the ordinate in ILD right under the load. That would be again 1 into Z, that would be ZK name. Now we are talking about a case where we have some load W. So you still write the same ILD, okay, having a unit value at B. You calculate the ordinate Z right at the location where load W is present. Okay, and then we try to multiply the two, that is load multiplied by the corresponding coordinate and that will give us the value of reaction at B when the load W okay is at A right okay so I think okay when the load is load is at A correct now let us try to go to the next discussion that we have here so this is the influence line diagram for calculating the bending moment that is the internal force at some section C in a simply supported beam. Correct? So right now you need to understand we are trying to bring in, we are trying to bring one more parameter into consideration. Okay, so we have got a unit load moving on the beam. This unit load can occupy any position on the beam. Now our point of interest is at section C. So when the load is at some location say D, what is the bending moment at C is what we are talking about. Now the first thing that we need to do is we need to understand how to draw the ILD for bending moment at a given section. So here most important for us is the section at which we are trying to calculate the bending moment. So we always draw the influence moment diagram okay, for a given section. Now how do we draw the ILD for BM at a given section? Okay, It is quite simple. So we are trying to draw a, a triangle, okay. So please understand the maximum ordinate in the triangle is at C, okay. So the ordinate is calculated as what? A into B by L. What are A and B? So once section C is defined, okay, distance, okay, from the left support to C is small a and distance okay from the right support b to section c is b for example we have a span of 5 meters c is at a distance of 2 meters from left end okay small value is 2 meters and small b is 3 meters the total span is 2 plus 3 5 meters correct so we can easily get the ordinate okay right at section C okay in ILD for BM at C and how do we calculate the ordinate A into B divided by L correct so A is 2 meters B is 3 meters so 2 into 3 is 6 L is 5 6 by 5 1.2 the ordinate has a value of 1.2 right so we can easily or quickly okay calculate the ordinate IL, uh, of uh, the ILD okay drawn for bending moment at C. Now having done this how do we use this for example okay let me assume that okay the load when it moves from A to B at some instant it is at a D some point of time it is at D. So when the load is at a D how do I calculate the bending moment at C? I am not doing in a conventional way. We are using ILDs. So it is very simple. Okay. We again calculate the ordinate in ILD. Okay. Right under the unit wheel load. Okay. So I can easily try to work it out from simple geometry. So that means at distance B, the ordinate is AB by L. Okay. At some distance. Okay. That is distance from B to this unit load. Okay, what will be the ordinate? So let me assume that the ordinate here is Z. Okay, under the unit wheel load. Now once I get this, I can easily calculate the value of the bending moment at C. Okay, when the load is at D. Okay, so how do I do that? So it is 1 into Z will give me the value of bending moment at C. 
Now instead of unit load, we can have a, a load of W at the same point D. So we again do the same thing. Instead of multiplying 1 into Z, we multiply it as W into Z. Correct? We try to just try to say W into Z will give us the bending moment at C. Okay, when the load W is at D. So we just try to uh, uh, compare conventional sense. If you had to do this, okay, you have to first calculate the reactions VA, VB, okay, and then take the bending moment at C, okay, and then say the value of bending moment at C so and so. Whereas here we don't do that, okay, we just draw the ILD for BM at C. So once the section C is defined, AB values are automatically known, okay, so you can easily calculate the ordinate AB by L. So draw a baseline, put the ordinate and complete the influence line diagram. Then try to understand where the load is positioned on the beam. Try to calculate, draw, uh, calculate the ordinate right under the load. The product of intensity of load multiplied by the ordinate in ILD under the load will give you the bending moment at C. Please understand, you are calculating bending moment at C all the time. Okay, so this diagram exclusively is for you to calculate the value of bending moment at one point that is C. Okay. Now let's try to go to the next uh, important uh, uh, diagram. That's nothing but the ILD for shear force. So this is the last uh, important uh, influence line diagram. Okay, that you have to remember. Okay, so earlier we have drawn three influence line diagrams: ILD for vertical reaction at A, ILD for vertical reaction at B, ILD for bending moment at C. Now we are talking about ILD for shear force at C. So as usual. Okay, you got a simply supported beam AB. My point of interest is C. Okay, how does the shear force at C change when the unit load moves from A to B? Is what we are talking about. So once I say this is the section C, automatically, okay, A and B, okay, take values. Okay, so once you get this information, we quickly draw the ILD for shear force at C. Now look at this. Unlike the previous cases, okay, you have got an ordinate at C in the ILD, which is both positive and negative. Okay, so the negative ordinate, which is below the baseline at C, is calculated as the ratio of A by L. What is A? Distance of section C from support A. Okay, the left distance. So this distance, okay, divided by L. Okay, will give you the ordinate at this point. Okay, right, the lower ordinate. There is ordinate below the baseline. To get the ordinate, okay, above the baseline, it is B by L. So you get two ordinates here, one below the line, one above the line, and you will be joining these two to the respective ends of the baseline. So you are trying to basically get two right angle triangles one above the baseline, one above the baseline, below the baseline. Okay, and the ordinates are calculated as A by L and B by L. So please understand, A by L plus B by L, that is summation of the two ordinates is always equal to one. For example, if this is a beam of span 10 meters and A is three meters, obviously B is seven meters. So A by L is three by 10.3, B by L is seven by 10, which is 0.7, correct, right, and another important thing that we need to consider here, the ordinates in ILD to the left of section C is considered as negative and the ordinates in ILD to the right of section C, okay, is considered as positive. So you get both signs, negative and positive, whereas in case of ILD for reaction VA, or VB or bending moment, okay, we don't have uh, signs like plus minus, okay, we always say it is plus, whereas here we are trying to talk about two signs, okay, negative would be towards left of C and positive would be towards right of C, correct? Now, how do I, how do I make use of that, okay, to calculate the shear force at C? So, having drawn the influence line diagram for a given section C, my next a discussion would be I just try to place the load 
unit load at some location say d and for that location okay i am interested to calculate okay the shear force at c correct now just try to look at the shear force at c please understand okay in the ild there are two ordinates that we are trying to have one is the positive ordinate one is the negative ordinate correct so what is this positive ordinate and what is the negative ordinate so please understand okay so if you just try to at c if you are trying to talk about at c is it alright there are two ordinates and normally we would be trying to take that ordinate which will give us a higher value of shear force okay for a given position of load like for example trying to pull the unit load at a d okay that means instead of trying to pull the unit load here I can move the unit load here okay I can have two ordinates I will be choosing the larger of the two so that in my design I want the critical values however when it is at d things are very clear you get only one unique value that is z and using the product of 1 into z okay will give you the shear force at c when the unit load is at d okay so you can just try to understand this okay so the expression is the same whether you are talking about uh, reactions whether you are talking about bending moment or whether you are talking about uh, shear force every time you do the same thing in the sense that okay the value of that quantity it could be reaction bending moment or shear force at a given section is calculated as the product of the intensity of unit load multiplied by the ordinate in ILD right under the load okay so uh, this is simple instead of unit load if you have a load W no problem okay you will be multiplying the value of W with Z and that will give you the shear force at C correct so uh, this is this are whatever discussion that we have made are very important okay so we have basically talked about four influence line diagrams one is influence line diagram for VA another is for influence line diagram VB both are right angle triangles okay and the next one is the influence line di diagram for bending moment okay which is a triangle having a, having a maximum ordinate at C next is the influence line diagram for shear force at C okay as you can clearly see on the slide there are two right angle triangles simultaneously present back to back okay and you can clearly see how we calculate the ordinates like a by l b by l etc okay now the next discussion is how to compute the internal force when multiple v loads act on the beam now we just try to check okay i was just trying to say one unit v load or single concentrated load is what we were trying to tell now normally if you just talk about multiple wheel trucks there are many wheel loads okay that would be uh, that, 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 that the truck will have and uh, the load will be transferred at these multi multiple wheel points onto the beam right so what do we do when we have multiple wheel loads it's very simple the first thing is you need to understand okay for some position of load we will be doing the calculation so make the truck or the wheel loads multiple wheel loads okay to occupy some position correct draw the appropriate ILD under the beam it could be for reaction it could be for bending moment it could be for shear force you draw the appropriate ILD for a given section so please understand positioning of the loads and section where you are trying to calculate are independent they are two different okay they are not dependent they don't influence one another you can position the load anywhere you can calculate the quantity anywhere correct so once you have placed the loads multiple wheel loads the next one is just try to understand what section I am trying to calculate say section C and once you identify section C understand what is it I want to calculate is it bending moment or shear force accordingly draw the appropriate influence line diagram once you draw the influence line diagram you just look at the beam the beam is subject to many wheel loads all you are supposed to do is okay just come down and calculate the corresponding ordinates in ILD under each of these wheel loads say for example W1 you come down there would be Z1 coordinate Z1 in the uh, ILD now we got one more load W2 we will come down and then we will try to have one more wheel load uh, one more uh, ordinate under the wheel load second wheel load in ILD say Z2 so likewise we have WN 
then z8. So once I have calculated all the ordinates, a simple expression, okay, right, any internal force or reaction is calculated as the algebraic summation of wi into zi, okay, for all values of y, that is w1z1 plus w2z2 plus w3z3, etc., plus wnzn, where w suffix i stands for the many wheel loads that we are trying to consider. Okay, so I think we will uh, stop the uh, uh, presentation, okay, uh, right at this point. Okay, so in the next class, okay, we will continue our discussion with respect to how to uh, calculate the internal forces when we have uh, UDL, okay, acting on the beam. Okay, thank you.